Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this new video about Emil Floor. In today's video, we are going to start to log models. Um, so far, we have seen how to log parameters, metrics, and artifacts. Uh, in today's video, we are going to start with the most important part of Emil Floor, I could say, or one of the most important, uh, that is logging models. Because in the end, what we want to do is to track the models that we are developing uh, when we are working on a machine learning project. So, in today's video, I'm going to talk about the mlflow.autolog method. Um, this method basically enables automatic logging um, that allows us to log metrics, parameters, and models without the need for explicit log statements. So, by using this method, we can avoid using mlflow.log parents, mlflow.log metrics, mlflow.log artifacts, and so on. And here we can see a list of frameworks, supported frameworks. We have scikit-learn, Keras, Glom, sgboost, and so on. So all these methods allow using uh, autolog. The only requirement that we have to keep into account is that, or to take into account, is that we have to use mlflow.autolog before any dot .fit uh, statement. For example, here in this example, they are calling mlflow.autolog uh, before training the model. So let me show you the code that I have prepared for this video. Here we have um, the classic example. Uh, we are creating a new run called login models, and we are associating this run with experiment using the experiment ID. And then we have this, let's say, fake feature engineering stage in which we are using make classification to create an artificial data set and the class train test split to split that data into training and testing data. Then we can call the method autolog which will allow to log uh, sorry which will allow us to log the model and some metrics and parameters. So let me run this code and show you what happens. Okay, here auto login successfully enabled for scikit-learn. Okay, it's okay. Now let me show you the interface. Here we are. Let me just refresh this. And we have login models. Here the first thing that we can see is that we have a new artifact called model. Uh, this is a folder that contains uh, different files. We have this file called mlmodel, and this is the format in which mlflow logs uh, machine learning models. Here we can see different, let's say, high-level information about the model. Uh, something that is important to highlight is flavor. Um, and flavor is an important concept in mlflow because this is the tool that allows us to integrate mlflow into different frameworks. Uh, when we are talking about flavors, what we are referring to is basically to the framework that we we are using to train a machine learning model. For example, in our case, uh, our framework is scikit-learn, but for other people, it could be TensorFlow, it could be SGBoost, etc. So, in addition to this uh, file, we also have additional files that are specifying the requirements of the dependencies that you need to install in order, in order to reproduce this experiment. And finally, we also have the, the model. This file, this pickle file, uh, is storing basically the weights the, of the model that we created. Um, okay, in addition to that, we also have some uh, artifacts, some images training confusion matrix, a uh, training precision recall curve, a very good model, um, training ROC curve. Of course, this is not possible in real life, but this is just because I am using a dummy model and training data. So notice here that we have lot and uh, these artifacts, these images, without using any kind of, let's say, es explicit statement like log image of calculate the confusion matrix or so on. So this is all um, something that MLflow has uh, created 
for us. We also have tags. In this case, the, those tags refer to uh, the name of the class that we are using in scikit-learn. We have some metrics, a very good model, and these metrics are being calculated using training data. We have parameters, or the parameters, uh, let's say, for a random forest classifier. So that was everything for this model, for this video, sorry. Uh, in the next video, we are going to see uh, how to have more control about the things that, uh, how to have more control over the things that we are logging. So for example, since we are using MLflow, uh, since we are using scikit-learn as a main framework, we can use the, fla the flavor scikit-learn dot uh, lock model and you know basically have more control over the things that we want to lock using MLflow. So here we can see uh, let's say more parameters that we can add uh, when using lock model. Uh, the disadvantage of this is that we have to use uh, lock artifacts of lock parameters or lock metrics uh, in order to lock let's say additional data in the experiment. So thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one.